Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to see a rather challenging problem. Something a little bit more uh, challenging here. We're trying to find the resistance of a cylinder, and this is indeed a cylinder, but there's a cutout, and the cutout is not a cylinder itself. It's kind of truncated cone. The radius at the top is A, the radius at the back is B, the radius of the whole cylinder is R, and the length of the cylinder is L. On top of that, the resistivity is not constant. It's equal to X plus AL over B minus A. X being the variable in the length, assuming that we have an X axis over here and we have a Y axis over there. So we'll put this right there at the origin to make it easier to work with. We can then see that X would be the length in this direction, any position in this direction. So we know that the resistance is equal to the resistivity times the, length, the path length divided by the cross-sectional area. And since everything is changing, the cross-sectional area is changing, the, resist the resistivity is changing, we probably want to go ahead and imagine a small little slice of this. So if we go ahead and take a little slice, like this, and then try to imagine the cross-sectional area of that, it would be kind of a washer, right? It would be kind of a shape of a washer like this, and let's see here. That would be the inside, and of course you could see the thickness of the washer this way, see the thickness of the washer this way, so it would be kind of a shape like that if we were to take a little slice of that. And then the radius of the inner side, let's call this equal to y, because we know that's going to vary depending upon where we take the slice, y is going to be bigger here and small over there. We need to determine the value for y as a relationship to x, of course, the outside radius, so you can see the inside radius would be y, and the outside radius would be r. That would be the radius of the cylinder. And the thickness, okay, that would be a dx. So the thickness of this little slice would be a, a dx. So how would we s calculate the resistance of that little slice? Well, we use the very same equation, except it would just be a dr, a small portion of the total resistance. So we can say that dr is equal to the resistivity, which is this quantity right there, so I'll just write it as resistivity, times the length, which would be dx, divided by the area, the cross-sectional area. So now we have to determine the cross-sectional area of this. All right, so the cross-sectional area, A, would be equal to the area of the outside radius, that would be equal to uh, pi r squared minus the inside radius, which would be pi y squared. All right, and that's what would go in here, so that would be pi times the quantity r squared minus y squared. All right, now r is a constant, but y is not. y is a variable, and notice that y is not the same variable as the variable here, our differential dx. So we have to relate those two to one another. When I look at this line right here that reminds me of a, of a straight line, like a y equals mx plus b kind of line, so let's go y equals mx plus b, and of course the slope would be the rise over the run, so that would be y equals the rise, so it would go from a to b, so the rise is b minus a, and the run would be the length of the cylinder, so that would be the slope of that line, that represents y there, and then that would be times x, plus the intercept, now be careful, I'll put a little parenthesis on there, this b of course is not the same as that b, that is the y-intercept, in this case the y-intercept is actually a, so we'll write this plus a, so that's the relationship between y and x. So what we need to do then is we need to plug in this y in here and square it and see what we get. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have dr is equal to the resistivity times dx divided by pi. I just go ahead, went ahead and took uh, pi out. And so now we have r squared, r squared minus y when y is equal to this and so that would be equal to b minus a over l times x plus a quantity squared. And of course I need close parentheses there. So now we need to simplify that a little bit. You know to make things easy, sometimes what I do if I have something like b minus a over l, I'm just going to call that some constant k. So I'm going to let k equals b minus a over l just to work with it a little bit easier, and then I go ahead and substitute that back in later on. So let's rewrite it, so we can say that dr is equal to resistivity times dx divided by pi times r squared minus, and this would now become kx plus a quantity squared, like so, and I go ahead and multiply that out, see what we get. 
So dr is equal to resistivity times the x divided by pi times, and what we get here is we get r squared minus, we get k squared x squared minus twice the product of these two, that would be k a, oh, I forgot a 2, so minus 2 ka times x, that would be twice the product of the two terms, and then minus the last term squared like that. Oop, and I guess I had square bracket. Okay, now when I look at that, I notice that I have in the denominator an x squared term, an x to the first term, and a constant term. Now if I combine these two like that, also, I think I would like to get rid of the negative sign, and I would like to get rid of the k squared because I want an x squared by itself. So let's try that. So we get dr is equal to, and I'm going to also substitute this quantity right here, this rho, which is equal to this right here, and notice that a divided by, or uh, b minus a over l is the inverse of k, right? So we have k is b, o, b minus a over l, so l divided by b minus a would be 1 over k, so I can replace this by this quantity right here, so x plus, and that would be a over k for now. Okay, so that simplifies things a little bit. So I can go ahead and plug that in here. So we have the constant times the quantity x plus a over k. Now notice when I do that, that kind of sets me up for the differential of the denominator because the denominator is going to be an x squared term, an x to the first, and a constant. And here I have an x plus a constant. It means the numerator becomes a differential of the denominator, which makes it easier to integrate. And of course, I did that by setting up kind of a special kind of resistivity. And then, of course, we still have our dx. And then simplifying the denominator, I'm going to factor out a minus k squared. So this becomes pi minus and a k squared. And then what I have left here, I have a positive x squared. I'll have a positive 2ax over k, so 2ax over k. And then that will be a positive and that will be a negative. And so it would be a plus a squared minus r squared. Since I factor out a negative one, that becomes positive, that becomes negative. And I factor out a k squared, so I need a, oh, and let me do that a little bit better. k squared, like that. All right, so that's my denominator now. Eventually, I'm going to have to integrate this, of course. And notice what I have, and of course, I still need a plus there. Okay, now, I have a x squared, a 2a over k times x, and a constant. This is simply just a constant. So when I take the differential of this, notice, in the numerator, if I let this be u, then I need a du in the, in the numerator. The du would be a 2x. I don't have a 2 there, so I need a 2 there. It would be a 2a over k. I have an a over k, so I need another 2 there. So that means if I multiply this by a 2 and that by a 2, but otherwise if I multiply the numerator by a 2, I have the proper differential. So I'm going to put a 2 there and a 2 there. So I multiply the, the numerator by a 2, and of course I should also then multiply the denominator by 2 to compensate for that. So now I have the proper differential for what I have in the denominator. I can go ahead and integrate that now. So my r, there is total resistance. This is going to be equal to the integral of all the dr's. And of course, I'm going to integrate this from, uh, let's see, um, my variable is x. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to l. 0 to L because I'm integrating over my variable x, right there. And my constants are, so this is equal to minus rho, I have 2 pi k squared. And then I'm going to integrate from 0 to L. In the numerator, I have uh, 2x plus 2a over k the whole thing times dx. In the denominator, I have an x squared plus 2a over k times x plus the constant a squared minus r squared over k squared. There we go. Now, 
If I let u be the denominator, I have a d in the numerator. So this really becomes this, and let me write in red. So this whole integral right there kind of looks like this format. So let me put it in here. It's like the integral of u and d in the, in the numerator. So what's the integral of that? Well, that's the integral is equal to the natural log of that, right? So if I have this in the denominator and have the, the du in the numerator, the integral that is simply the natural log of that. So I'm going to simply take, make that into the natural log. So this becomes equal to minus rho sub naught 2 pi k squared. And this now becomes the natural log of this quantity, which is x squared plus 2a over k times x plus a squared minus r squared over k squared. And the limits are from 0 to L. Now before I plug in the limits, I probably want to revert back to what k is equal to. k was equal to b minus a over L. Since I'm going to be plugging in an L, there's probably some cancellation going on. So let me resort back to what k is equal to. So this is equal to minus rho sub naught divided by 2 pi. And k squared, that would be b minus a, it's in the denominator. So I'm going to write this as b minus a. Whoop, minus a quantity squared and L squared in the numerator. Write that. Times the natural log of x squared plus 2a divided by k. So it would be 2a. And k is b minus a over L. So I have a b minus a in the denominator and an L in the numerator times x plus, and here we have a squared minus r squared. And I have a k squared in the denominator. So that means I have a b minus a quantity squared and I'll have an L squared in the numerator. And now I can evaluate this from 0 to L. So what do I get when I plug in the upper limit? All right, this is equal to minus rho L squared divided by 2 pi times b minus a quantity squared times the natural log of, when I plug in the upper limit, I get L squared plus 2al squared over b minus a plus, and this becomes the quantity a squared minus r squared times l squared divided by b minus a quantity squared. And I'll put that in parentheses. Oh, no, I don't have to put that in parentheses. I'll just leave it like that. Minus, and I'm going to plug in the lower limit. And of course, when I plug in the lower limit, this and this drops out, and I'm just simply left with the natural log of a squared minus r squared times l squared. I probably want to put parentheses around that. So it'll be, let me see here, a squared, yep, better put parentheses around that, like that. Okay, times l squared divided by b minus a let's say quantity squared. And a big bracket like that. All right. Now, of course, what I want to do next is go ahead and use the logarithm rules to put one underneath the other. And so this is equal to minus rho sub naught L squared over 2 pi times B minus A quantity squared times the natural log of, and I'm also going to write this on a common denominator here, so I can write this as a natural log of b minus a quantity squared l squared plus 2a l squared times b minus a plus a squared minus r squared times l squared and the whole thing divided by b minus a quantity squared. So what I've done is I wanted to write all that over common denominator, so multiply this by b minus a quantity squared, this by b minus a, and that one stays as it is, and divide this whole thing by this, which is a squared minus r squared times l squared, all divided by b minus a quantity squared. All right, because of course the natural log of a minus the natural log of b is the natural log of a over b, and then you can see that these cancel out. So now we have this divided by that. And, oh, all the L squares cancel out. So the L squared cancels out with this L squared. 
And then finally, I suppose since we have this negative here, we can take the negative and flip that around because the natural log minus 1 times the natural log of something is always equal to the natural log of that in reverse. And so we can say that this is equal to the resistivity times L squared divided by 2 pi times B minus A quantity squared times the natural log of, and then of course we take the negative and we flip that upside down, so we have A squared minus R squared divided by whatever we have left here, which is B minus A quantity squared plus 2A times B minus A, and finally plus A squared minus R squared. And that would then be the total resistance of that cylinder with that cone-shaped piece cut out. Wow, that's uh, quite a problem, but again, it's kind of nice to know that no matter what you end up facing, any sort of shape, any sort of cutout, you should be able to determine a small little slice. If it's a cylinder, it's a slice. If it's a sphere, it'll be like a, a small little um, uh, shell. And then we can integrate over the shells, or in this case, integrate over the slices. And of course, we have a variable resistivity and a variable cross-section put together. That's how we solve problems like that.